Oh, you got to keep the camera rolling. You never know what's going to happen. Okay. Um, use factoring to solve the quadratic equation. So first of all, quadratic equations have to be set equal to zero when we solve them. Why is this quadratic? Why is it considered quadratic? Because we have x squared. We have an x term. This constant is not necessary, but it's still a uh, part of this. We would call this a quadratic trinomial equation. How many times have you heard that? Trinomial because it has three terms. Descending in degree. Squared, x to the first, and then a constant. Technically, x to the zero power, because anything to the zero power is, is one. So, um, if we're looking to factor this, we're trying to find two numbers that multiply to be negative 72 and add to be negative 1. Those two numbers would be negative 9 and positive 8. Now here we go with some new information. Like I said, I'm going to put a ton of information on this slide and we're going to build off of that. Uh, it's terminology that you're going to hear a lot in pre-calc. These are, these are factors of this. Why are they factors? Why do we consider them to, why are we calling them factors? We just did this. We did the process of factoring. These are factors because they multiply to be that. They are the two things that we can multiply together to be that. So this is the product of factors. More specifically, we call these linear factors. We call these linear factors. That might not be so obvious, but we call them linear factors because each one separately could be graphed as a line. Right? When you think about y equals mx plus b, when you think about the linear equation, the slope-intercept form of a line, you have a slope and you have a y-intercept. So technically, each one of these has its own individual slope and its own individual y-intercept. So that's why we call them linear factors, okay? That's a, that's a, a big vocab word when you get into pre-calc. Now when you look at this and we're asked to solve, we've set this problem up so that we have a product that's equal to zero. And we've said this many times now. If you have a product of zero, either one of these terms could be zero. So we set them each separately equal to zero. We say, well, in this case, x could equal 9. Or in this case, x could equal negative 8. Now, these values are very, very, very important values. Not only are they the solutions, we would call those the solutions. We just solved this equation. So we would call these the solutions, yes? The solutions to the equation. But more importantly, and much more useful in pre-calc, you're noticing a theme here, I hope, is these are the values of x that if I plug them in here, I will have an output of zero. Therefore, these solutions are called zeros of the function. These are the zeros of x squared minus x minus 72. They're the solutions to the equation because when I set the equation equal to zero, I get those numbers. They are called zeros. This idea, this concept, becomes very big, it looms very large in pre-calc. Now there are some things in our course, in our summer course, that we are not, we won't have time to talk about here because they get covered in pre-calc, but I'm just trying to touch on a few of those right now. This is one of the big ones. This gets covered in, in Algebra 2 honors. We don't have a ton of time, but I wanted to make sure you had exposure to this. The solutions are called zeros. And they are called zeros because they make the equation equal to zero. They fit into this equation when it is set equal to zero. Okay? More to come on that. Get your calculator out. Get your calculator out. I'm going to stop this and pick it up 